Hello and welcome to the Fish Nerds, the show about fish, fishing, and eating fish. Uh, it's November. It's Napod Pomo Month, National Podcast Posting Month. For the month of November, we're going to try and post a podcast every single day right here at the Fish Nerds podcast feed. And we're going to bring special guests, fun stories. Uh, all going to be kind of loosely, <laughs> let me use loosely, loosely news uh, related topics. So the Fish in the News is our most popular segment. And we need support this month. We need voices on the show. So if you want to record a Fish in the News segment for us, grab your phone or grab your computer, try to get a reasonably good microphone, a USB mic, and record us in a fishy news story. F- find something in the news. Record it, riff on it. It doesn't even have to be good or real. It just has to be interesting. And then send it to clay at fishnerds.com uh, to, to listen. Today, our special guest, and we're so excited about this, our special guest is the amazing James, Ranger James. Uh, the amazing James used to be one half of the FN West, the Fish Nerds West. And uh, we just love hearing him come back on the show again. And he's very, <laughs> we missed having him around. And, uh, so anyway, we're going to just jump right on in with today, day two of Napod Pomo with the amazing James. News, news, fish in the news. Everybody loves their fish in the news. What's up, nerds? This is Amazing James. It's been a while. Uh... <laughs> Also, this is Ranger James, actually. That's what I go by in my usual day-to-day job. But hey, um, I have this article I just wrote for Bay Nature Magazine, which is a pretty popular thing out here in the Bay Area of California by San Francisco. And I'm about to read it to you. It's a little article called, What's That Fish Jumping at the Shallow Bay's Edge? It's an Ask the Naturalist column. I do this every month online. So if you're interested in finding this out or any other cool stuff that Bay Nature posts, um, then look up Bay Nature magazine. It's really awesome. Another really cool thing that Bay Nature is involved in is this thing called iNaturalist. And if you're the kind of person who likes finding new critters and uh, figuring out what they are and helping scientists track uh, the movements of critters in terms of seasonality and where they belong and where they don't belong and things like that, check out iNaturalist. It is available for download in your app store. And here we go. I just want to preempt this with the fact that a reason why I wrote this particular article is because, number one, one of my staff members came in and asked me this question, what are these fish jumping at the edge of the bay? And then... (laughs) <laughs> I I really wanted to figure out a way to address something that happened earlier this year in our neighborhood. We had a humpback whale show up in Alameda, California. You can look this up. It was very interesting. We had a humpback whale that was hanging out in this little lagoon, um, like an enclosed area uh, that used to be part of the Navy base. And it's pretty shallow in there. It's maybe, I want to say it's 40 feet deep. So for a humpback whale, it's pretty shallow. And... <clears throat> The interesting thing about this was that everyone thought the whale was stranded and and the poor, poor whale. As a fish guy, I'm just going to say this out loud. I'm not a big whale fan. Not not a big whale fan. Um, It's not because of anything but I don't like the fact that so many people are so concerned about whales and dolphins and other marine mammals that they just ignore all the other stuff. Like, there's just so many people that are thinking that, that marine mammals and, and big megafauna are are so important that we should take really good care of them and make sure that we take such careful attention, pay such careful attention to these critters, that we don't pay attention to anything else. And it drives me nuts. So when people seeing this humpback whale jumping out of the water and doing this really cool corralling behavior where it was scooping up anchovies and essentially bulking up for its trip, for its survival. People were like, oh, the poor whale, it's trapped. And I was thinking, no, this whale is actually really smart. If you've ever seen fish cornered in a bay by other fish chasing them, it's exactly what this whale was doing. It was the coolest thing to see. Anyway, I finally found a way to mention this, and you're going to hear this at the end of my little um, spiel here. Here we go. So this comes to you by way of the Ask the Naturalist column at baynature.org. 
and it was published on October 29th, 2019. Yesterday afternoon, I went for a jog along the Bay Trail. This is the question. I went for a jog along the Bay Trail and saw a bunch of little fish flipping around near the surface right at the edge of the beach. What were they? Where were they, or were they being chased by something? And this is by AJ in Alameda. Now, AJ is actually one of my staff here. He's a uh, student aide. He's a college student who helps us out at Crab Cove Visitor Center. So <clears throat> here's my response. Fishes flip and jump for a variety of reasons. Sturgeon, for example, are thought to do it for communication. The massive Jurassic period descendants migrate upstream to spawn during the muddy water flows of winter and spring when it's hard to see even inches into the water. Anyone's, anyone who's ever witnessed or experienced a belly flop at the pool, ouch, knows that the sound of a six-foot creature slapping the water sure gets attention. What an amazing thrill to hear the slap of a massive white sturgeon, a sepenser transmontanus, after it leaps from the water under a moonlit sky in the spring. Sturgeon happen to jump most frequently at the height of their breeding season, when presumably they want to find one another the most. The first question I have to ask when someone tells me they saw fish jumping is how many and how big? On the opposite end of the size spectrum from the sturgeon and the mosquito larva munching rainwater killifish. And they're a guppy-sized eastern U.S. species that was first seen in California at Berkeley's Aquatic Lagoon, which is a long tidal pond next to Interstate 80 here in near Oakland. In 1958 is when that happened. With the ability to handle fresh water and a range of salinity as high as three times that of the ocean. Something like 90 PPT, which is absurd. They're just about everywhere today. Whether they got here in ballast water as eggs hitching a ride with a shipment of oysters or mixed in with a, with mosquito-controlling gambusia from the other side of the Continental Divide. It's beside the point. The omnipresent pigeons of the fish world earn their common name from the little ripples they make as they scurry and feed at the surface of a glassy surface pond. It's not so much a flip as a flitting about, and in mass, you'd be fooled into thinking the little rings at the water's surface were caused by raindrops. I actually happened to see this happen maybe about a week ago, which was really cool. I was walking home at night and seeing this or just as the sun was going down. Most typically this happens at dusk when the water is still warm from the sun and the mosquitoes are getting active. But you were at the beach and there were probably waves. There probably were waves. So I'm going to abandon that hypothesis. Now what you saw AJ along the beach was likely a shoal of California anchovy, AKA Northern anchovy, uh, in Gralis mordax is their species name, scientific name which have been described as the most abundant fish in the bay. Note that I said shoal and not school. There's a slight difference. A shoal is what we call a social grouping of fish. Schooling is the synchronized swimming behavior of a shoal <clears throat> that they might do when they tighten up in mass for protection from predators. Schooling is a kind of shoaling, not the other way around. Whether feeding or breeding, which some anchovies do year round, as plankton feeders, anchovies not only school for protection, but to feed more efficiently. Much like the diving flocks that you see of cormorants that hunt in a row, anchovies work together in a school to gobble up zooplankton and tidy critters in their path. The ones you saw at the beach, AJ, were likely eating, spawning, or both. If your anchovies were being chased... Oh, here we go. This is where I bring in the humpback whale. If your anchovies were being chased and cornered by striped bass, halibut, or perhaps a harbor seal, you would have seen much bigger splashes. In fishing lingo, they're called boils. And speaking of big splashes, remember that humpback whale? The one that was jumping in Alameda in the summer of 2019? It was corralling shoals of northern anchovies into an enclosed lagoon, frightening them into schools and devouring them to bulk up. It's quite effective to corner prey near the shore like that. The moral of the story is that when you see things jumping by the shore, they're probably eating or making sweet, fishy love. Isn't nature amazing? And that, my friends, is the article I wrote for Bay Nature. I'm pretty excited about it. There's a cool photo at the top of some anchovies swimming, and there's a cool photo of a we of a whale at the bottom here who's munching away at some anchovies, which I've seen it happen up close out there in the uh, in the ocean, going out in my boat under the Golden Gate Bridge. I've done it a few times. It's quite fun, and the whales are right out there just munching away. So I love seeing that, and uh, love seeing 
the amazing things that nature has to offer. So anyway, on that note, stay fishy, my friends. We'll catch you later. All right. Hey, thanks so much, James. We, we uh, Like I said earlier, we missed having you on the show. Never knew so much about anchovies, and now look at this. We're so much smarter than ever before. But uh, anyway, tomorrow, back up again with another episode of the Fish in the News. All right. If you're still with us, it means you're a real fan of the show. And so I just want to do a little housekeeping here at the back end. We are still running our contest, the Fish Nerds Contest, uh, the call-in contest, 607-378-FISH, where you call in and you tell us the most unethical thing you've ever seen while fishing. And if you uh, do that, we'll enter you into the contest to win a prize pack from Angle King and lead free glass, glass water lead-free fishing, some fi- Fish Nerds decals, uh, a hat, some other buffs, uh, buffs, some other... I can't say the words, some other swag uh, and some fun stuff from us. Uh, and you have all month to do that. So get those calls in 607-378-FISH. We only have about five entries so far. I'd really love to see, you know, maybe 10, 12 entries so that I can put a whole show together around it. And uh, so that's it. See you tomorrow. <laughs>